This is Hello. from Fred was fighting. I'm joined over Zoom by Anthony Taylor. It's been a while since you last worked, Anthony. You look very smart. How are you? I'm good, but guess who's back? Back again. Fred is back. Fred back again. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Yo, I'm feeling good, Fred. Everything I do, because the world's fed. Sounds pretty nice. A nice little, nice little scene there. But have you been to a meeting? Have you been to like some office conference? What's with the shirt today? You look very smart. Um, normally, I mean, every time you see me, Fred, I'm always dressed up, right? Am I right or wrong? You never really see me in streetwear. I'm either in a jumpsuit or a dress shirt or a suit, right? Hang on a sec. Well, I'm trying to think now. When we were in Dubai Mall together, and we ate some food in Dubai Mall, were you dressed up then? I'm trying to think back. Yeah, I was either in a dress shirt because I was always going out. That's why. <laughs> you thought you were going to find a date and you bumped into me. That means we just went and got food instead. <laughs> right, right. No, but I like to dress up, Fred. You know, um, I, I like to paint this image as, as a good man, which I am. But I like to switch it up. I wear my tracksuits on a comfortable day just to let people know, hey, I'm versatile fashion. <laughs> First time it is. But Anthony, let's just go, let's just hop straight into it. Obviously, you, I went to interviewed you. I think you were in Elle's changing rooms after the fight, and I interviewed you there. And we did a little mm -hmm. recap of the fight. What news has circulated recently in your return to Misfits Boxing or to influencer boxing in general? Oh, man. I've been, I've been offered, I can't say promotions, but I have been offered lucrative. Um, I've I've had lucrative offers to fight on organizations. Uh, you know, I've had interest in from PFL. I've had interest from um, Bellator. I've had interest. I can say those two companies, but other other influencer boxing, I can't really say. But I've had offers from people from the East Coast to the West Coast to some of the biggest promotions there is in the game. And I'm blessed to be in this position. Yeah, I probably, yeah, I would have been in a better position if I had the outcome over Idris Verka. I'd probably be fighting Floyd instead of Aaron Chalmers. I blew that. If I would have beat Idris Verka, I would have fought Aaron Chalmers. Some people could have said, hey, I could have waited until the, I could have waited and not fight Idris Verka and still fought Floyd in February. But the pride of me is like, man, I like to fight. It's not about the money. You know, I, I, I like to entertain the crowd. Okay. I understand where you're coming from there. I'm guessing the free promotions. Well, I was going to say at the start, um, Global Titans, Kingpin, Misfits. But it's interesting how you bring the PFL up and then Bellator. Um, PFL is an interesting one because Jake Paul is now heavily part of that promotion. And I know you know Jake for in the past. How are those five promotions I just named? Which one is most likely for you to fight in next? Mm. Oh, wow. Man. Uh, let's say I really can't say too much, but there, there's a bidding war, if I'm going to say. Fred, there's a bidding war. Um, there's, uh, there's two. We can add on two more promotions into that. Let's add on seven promotions altogether. Uh, there's a high possibility chance that I can be in all of them, but more of the crossover boxing promotions than per se Bellator and PFL. PFL. Mm -mm. So, do you think you're going to end up boxing in the next fight or MMA? Um, I want to fight March fourth or March seventh. For Bellator in San Jose, my hometown, just the Bay Area itself. But I don't really see how likely because I'm about a buck eighty, and me fighting at fifty five is gonna take a lot of time trying to get down there. But well, why can't I give you a fight? Your weight class you're at now. Why does that have to be your old weight class? I mean, come on, Fred. One hundred and seventy pounds in MMA. That's a big weight. It is. A lot of people's coming down from two ten, coming down from two ten just to make one seventy. I'm 180, between 180 and 185, and I'm trying to cut down to 55. That's a 30-pound weight cut. You've got a month. The, <laughs> you got a one month. 
I do. I know you're right. When you think about it, you're right. I I'm actually, you know what? Hey, who knows? But at the end of the day, there's there have been offers. There are a big war going on for my service, and there will be an announcement next week on who I sign. I'm still looking over it with my team, my manager, my coaches. I'm still looking over who's worth it all. You know, there there might be Kingpin. It might be Global Titan. It might be Mystic. You know, uh, there's there's big promotions. So, so far, there's a bidding war with all three. We'll say that. Big bidding war, all three. There's also Floyd Mayweather's promotion. We can throw that up there. You know, they're, they're, my... My presence is such a high demand friend. You see what I can do. You know, every time I touch the mic, I'm going viral. There's always a viral moment. There's always something. Anthony's about to do something that's going to go crazy. I never knew I made the shade room. And the shade room had 23 million followers. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's true. You definitely do know. You do know how to cut a promo. I'll give you that. Um, Let's go on to your thoughts on the new Misfits Boxing Tag Team match. What are your thoughts on that? That's quite exciting. That's kind of WWE. What do you make of it? I mean, I, I like the creativity to it. <laughs> I really do. You can only do it during an exhibition bout. You can't do it through a pro sanction bout. It's just no governed boxing commission in America will sanction it, but possibly in the, in the UK. I mean, look, Fred, we saw stuff from two on one to three on one hell we saw spider-man fight batman and robin and kick both their asses on the internet friend we've seen that stuff oh, we've seen i know that video you're talking about yeah yeah bro we've seen a thousand on a thousand we've seen five on five in the cages and bro it, you never know what can happen when you're talking about that madman ah oh, man that madman mad you know, and that's the tongue twister, Fred. Let me hear you say it. Mad man. Mad, mad man, man. That's easy. Yes. <laughs> say it faster. Mad bad mams. Mad bad mams. There you go. <laughs> that's, that, that's the tongue twister right there. We just created a tongue twister. Mad man mams. That, that, that's a new one. Triple M. Start calling him Triple M. Mad man man. Mad man man. You can change his name in your contacts book on your phone. Um, let's get your thoughts on this upcoming Misfits card. March 7th, I think it believe look at it, it's happening. It's taking place. Um well that that's it is March 7th, isn't it? Am I wrong? March 4th. March you 4th. Serious? That's a really yeah, bad March 4th. I don't know the correct date. Oh yeah. This is still getting cut. This is getting cut out. Um, it is March 4th. Um, what are your thoughts on the main event? That part, Jay I, I don't think that's a good main event. I don't think that it's a good headline. Uh, it doesn't pose a threat. I personally think, um, I mean, I would love to freaking have Dean run it because it's Dean, but the strong suit of the opponent doesn't really match as far as the opponents between Dean and the opponent to be a main eventer. I do feel like Dean deserves the main event, but his opponent doesn't deserve the main event. In a sense, because we've never seen the fight. I personally think a King Kenny versus actually Raksu would be a good fight. You know, knowing that King Kenny does have a big uh, background here. Um, Ashley Raksu being a former foe, opponent of mine. Let's see how that goes. Because the fight people want to see is King Kenny versus Ashley Raksu. They want to see how King, let's see how good is Ashley Raksu because he went all four rounds, all three rounds with me. Now, let's say if King Kenny finished Ashley Raksu in the first round, they're saying, well, King Kenny finished somebody that Anthony couldn't finish. So, how good is King Kenny really, really is? But let's also say Ashley Raksu beats King Kenny. That right there is a good match. That right there is a good match. Because if Ashley Raksu beats King Kenny, then you can say, well, Anthony destroys King Kenny. I, I've i preached that Ashley Raksu should be fighting more. He's a hell of a guy, tremendous entertainer, funny guy. I'm looking forward to seeing him fight again. But I'm also, 
I'm looking forward to see Jay Swinger. Jay Swinger reminds me of Ed Hardy. He kind of looks like him a little bit. <laughs> For some reason, every time I see him, I just think of Ed Hardy. No disrespect to Jay Swinger. He's an amazing, phenomenal boxer. He's improving every time I see him fight. There's no hate towards it. I just feel his opponent is not strong enough to carry that card and help him. Okay, I guess that's a fair argument. Um, I see what you mean. It's weird because Nick LMAO has got 20 million subscribers. But yeah, people from the UK haven't heard of him. It's weird how the kind of social media game works. Um, do you think a match between yourself and any will be possible down the line? Because obviously, if you've got this common opponent, Ashley, you can see. Yeah, no, absolutely. Before I tr- go on that question, it's just I don't feel like a guy who's never stepped into the influencing world should get the chance making their debut on Memphis, especially who's never boxed in life, should get a chance of getting a title shot let alone the main event. Jay Swingler opponent is getting a title shot and a main event, an opponent who's never fought before. I think it's wrong. Give it to guys who fought multiple times and let them showcase their skills, and you fight somebody who's fought already. But on to my question as matchmaking, yeah, absolutely, Fred. There are lots of opponents I have in mind. Salt Poppy, JMX, Tyron Woolley, Josh Bruckner, King Kenny, Slim, uh, Deji, KSI, uh, Gibb. Who else we got? Floyd, Logan Paul. I owe, the reason why I said Logan Paul because he knocked me down Spartan, so I owe him, owe him a knockdown. Logan Paul. Wait, say again. Actually, um, repeat that second. No, Logan Paul knocked you down in sparring. Lo- Logan caught me off guard in sparring. He knocked me down. So I owe him a sparring session. But that's that's, that's fair. Everybody get knocked down in sparring. I'm that everybody sparring. Um, that's so funny you mentioned that. So I remember Logan Paul uh, mentioning um, something about sparring. Someone after he come off a long, a long break from boxing. When did this Logan Paul sparring happen? Hmm. I like how you did that. That's that's the thumbnail, Fred. <laughs> I see how you brought it up. Fred, come on, for real. Like, I know I know you, Fred. I know you. Um me me and Logan sparred back in twenty one. Uh he got the better of me that round. He just caught me off guard with his height and just caught me. I came in with a, a looping left hook and he just stepped to the side and cracked my ass and caught me off balance and I fell. Um I got back up and you just start we and him just started working. He got the best of me that round because of knockdown. Um as far as me being knocked out and not no, come on, bro. If I got knocked out, Jake Paul and then would have sent me home. Come on. The, you know, I've been in I've been with Jake and him for like three months. There's no footage. There's footage. Jake and Logan has the footage, but there's no footage of me getting knocked out cold. Is him knocking me down. I'm getting up. We're still working. Yeah, he got the better of me of that round. I mean, that's one round of sparring, you know, but we're filling each other out. That's that's part of sparring. You know, Mike Tyson got knocked down in sparring before. Floyd probably got knocked down in sparring before. You know, everybody get knocked down. Tyson Fury's got knocked out before. We saw the clip. You know, Fred, he's got knocked out before. Anthony Joshua fell. Deontay Wilder fell before. Roe Jones probably slipped and fell and got caught. It's part of sparring, but we don't talk about sparring because no one's getting paid in sparring. But yeah, Logan, Logan got the good best of me in that first round of sparring, but we just did one round. You know, that was it. So you only sparred one round of Logan Paul, and after he knocked you down, how many minutes were left in the round? How many seconds were left? There? It was probably like a minute or forty-five seconds. One of those. And it's how so that, long, Fred. I don't remember. How did it go? The last kind of minute. Oh, yeah. Man, he got the best. He got the best of me. He was using his range. He was using his range to uh, to keep me at bay with his jab and great. You know, it was hard to get in on Logan because Logan was so lanky. But that's me being an inexperienced fighter that I was back then. You know, that's me coming into camp with Jake, not having a boxing experience. Now I'm a total for a different fighter now. As you see, I have a I have a uh, structure. I have a dance i have a style so it all depends how how we look at it you know that's that's a fight that can happen possibly now in future line like i said jake paul logan paul two different identities they do their own thing hmm. that's fair enough then and one last point for Diego anthony um saudi arabia i'm going in the end of this month you see jake paul's tommy fury it's very exciting 
you sparred Jake quite a lot, and you also shared the ring with Tommy. So you're probably the perfect person to break this fight down for me. Take it away, Anthony. How does this fight? Mm, Jake Paul, Jake Paul by unanimous decision. Tommy is just a big oof. Jake Paul has great ring IQ. He's smart. He's training properly and harder. He's a hard worker. I, I don't really see Tommy doing anything to, to hurt Jake. But do you think he, Tommy doesn't need to hurt Jake? He just need to flick that jab out for the number of rounds. I mean, rounds. I mean how do you see it? Jake Jake is just a hard, is just better condition. I mean, look at Jake's condition of Tommy. Tommy's used to doing four rounds. Opposed to Jake is used to doing eight rounds. Hmm. Okay. That's a fair argument. That's fair. I can see I can kind of see where it came from there. So you, why do you think Jake Paul stops him though? Do you think just Tommy's quite quite tough, too big, just wants it that bad? Uh, this is going to be a case of Usyk versus Anthony Joshua one. How Usyk just used the ring, he used every part of the ring. He moved around. He just come in, come out. He doesn't stay there. He's moving around. He's picking off Joshua, catching him with counter shots. Joshua is just coming forward, coming forward. It's going to be like that. Okay, that's interesting. That's a good uh, good analogy. Probably Usyk and AJ kind of up here, and obviously Jake Paul. Right, right. I mean, but the styles are similar. Yeah. Think about it. Jake Paul likes to move around. He likes to counter. He's not a brawler. So Usyk's looking at the size advantage. Usyk's not a brawler. He's a counter puncher. He likes to move. He's a slick fighter, just like Jake Paul. Jake Paul's a slick fighter. He's a counter puncher. He he likes to use the ropes. He likes to use all every part of the ring, the crevice of the ring. Anthony Joshua is a very heavy puncher. Heavy. He likes to come in one two. He's not really slick. He doesn't bounce. He doesn't move. How like how like Tyson does? You know, bouncing and moving. You know, doing all that. He's very come in one two one one two three. You know, Tommy Fury is like. Similar style to Anthony Joshua in a sense. Now, I'm not saying these guys are fighters like those caliber of fighters. I'm not saying that. And what I'm not going to say is Anthony Joshua and Usyk is the best fighters, or I'm not trying to discredit what Anthony Joshua did, nor am I trying to discredit what Usyk did. What I'm saying overall, so people get to understand the message, the fight is going to look similar. In a winning profession, uh, a fashion, winning fashion as Usyk did with Anthony Joshua. They Jake has a similar style as Usyk, and Tommy has a similar style as Anthony Joshua. If I'm saying it right, if I'm doing wording it better. Mm, okay, I can see see how you're wording it. Uh, um, just one last point. I'm sorry, I say I hold you a little longer. How have you not finished that coffee yet? You sipped it so many times. Which one? Oh, okay. You got multiple. Which 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 copy? The coffee, the one you're the one you're drinking, the mug, your tea. Man, I, man, I, man, I drink, I drink a lot of coffee. I drink, hold on, Fred. Let me show you. I drink, I drink a lot of coffee, Fred. I drink a lot of coffee. Oh, you thought I was drinking coffee? What's what's in that? I don't know. Ah, uh, just coffee. Oh, it is coffee. Okay. Sure. Hey, hey, when girls ask you how you like the coffee. You tell them, you tell them, for me, I say black like your men, or you just say blonde. Add a lot of creamer and milk until it comes off your skin color, Fred, and add a little sugar to make it sweet, baby. You can use... Hey, you tell them you like your coffee, my skin color? What do you mean? You add a lot of milk, and you just stir that motherfucker and come out blonde. I'm telling you, you know what I mean? You're talking about, Fred, right? You know how you put a lot of milk comes out blonde? Yeah, you tell a girl, how you like your coffee? Like me or like him? And you point at the black guy, like him? Like him or me? <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, you pick up lines you want to use. One last point. Um, I've got a fight for you. You think you can talk to Scott Croker at Bellator about. You versus Dylan Dennis. You but uh, Dylan ain't taking that fight. Dylan came in fight, bro. Dylan's Dylan got some messed up knee. He can't recover from that. They're not going to clear him for fight. He came and cleared himself to even fight in an exhibition match. I, I don't see it happen. But what I can say is, look, man, who knows what's going to happen between me and Soft Poppy? Who knows what's going to happen? We don't know what's going to happen. But 
who knows if I'm even fighting on Misfits again. I never said I was fighting on Misfits coming up on any dates. I said I've got lucrative multiple fight offers for different organizations. Okay, okay. Um, but if you fight Dylan Dennis in the octagon in MMA, how do you think that fight would play out? Domination first round. Dylan's gonna break. You're gonna try to do his little jutsu, stuff it, break it down, baby. The promo for that fight would be insane after the street fight. Oh man, that would probably be the most viewed fight ever. <laughs> Did you get light stuff in the street a lot after that street fight? Is that would you say your kind of most notorious moment or one of them that's gonna be up there, the most viral moment of your career? Yeah, that's probably gonna be the most notorious moment. Yeah, I know it sucks. This is gonna be notorious for punching Dylan Dennis. Hey, I'm the famous guy. I'm known for punching Dylan Dennis in the streets. You know, I don't wanna ever have to do that. I wanna be known as the pretty boy. The flamboyant one, you know, the Rizzly Bear, you know, the Rizzard of all. I was you quite know. that though, wasn't I, Anthony? Yeah, you you was you was clever for that one, Fred. I like that. Walt Rizzy. I like the Riz. I like you know, they call me the Rizzer. Rizzer, Rizzer, Rizzer. <laughs> okay, I think it's quite good. I have a ton of brother stuff. Anthony, I do appreciate you coming on the channel. Hopefully, I will see you soon. Like, what what do you got coming up for yourself? The next few months, apart from the fighting, anything? Oh man, I wish I could say I'm fighting this week, and I wish I can say I'm fighting. I'm fighting in three weeks. You know, I wish I can say I'm fighting on Floyd's card, and the next day I'm flying out to Saudi Arabia to fight on Jake's card, and then after that I fly out to London and fight on March fourth. I wish I could do that, but who knows, man? Uh, who knows? I might be fighting probably October. Who knows? I know it's weird, Fred. Like, you're so used to seeing me fight every few weeks. The man, I miss you, Anthony. Everyone loves you fighting so consistently. Um, do you what? I've got, I've, I need to put some words here. I've, now, after the Zoom ends, a little bit of editing, have dinner, and I've got a flight right now in the UK. It's 12 minutes past 11 p.m. I've got a flight to France to go skiing. Um, I'm going to have L and all our friends. Uh, oh, you going with L? You going with L, bro? Yeah, I'm going with oh, no, my friends. Um, skiing in France, so my flights are four a.m. in the. Hey, Fred, man, are you going to hit those or what? Come on, Fred. Come on, Fred. You've been too good to get. You might as well just pop that cherry, Fred, with her. Well, as I was saying, my flights are four a.m., so I definitely ain't much sleep tonight. So I just made sure to get some work done. Fred, kick this off the record so we can have a real talk. <laughs> Come on, take the recording off, Fred. Take the recording off, Fred. Come on, take the as recording I, off. As I, saying, as I was saying, <laughs> flies at 4 a.m., so I've got to get going. But, Anthony, I appreciate you coming on the Zoom. Make sure I'll see you very, very soon. You, you, Fred Richard. That's your name. All right, brother. I appreciate you, bro.